Eclipse season is here! What's up everyone? We're back with another round of astrology shots to get us through Aries season 2024. Now first and foremost, we're going to discuss Aries season 24, what makes this Aries season special and stand out. Secondly, we're going to take a little peek at the Aries ingress. This is a chart that astrologers use to forecast national and world trends. So we are going to take a look at that in a moment. First of all, Aries season is starting off on March 19th, 2024, goes until April 19th, 2024. Right as Aries season begins, of course, this is the equinox. This is a balance of equal daylight across the globe. Very cool. But we are stepping into eclipse season. That full moon is starting to ripen and it's going to get eclipsed. The earth the Earth's shadow, the sun is going to cast the Earth's shadow onto the face of the moon and it's going to be obscured. Not totally. This is not a total lunar eclipse. This is what we call a penumbral lunar eclipse. So the moon is just far enough away from the node that it doesn't get obscured completely. Um, but nonetheless, we are going to feel it. Nonetheless, we're going to feel it. So we'll be talking about that eclipse in greater detail in another video. But Here's the thing, folks, is that it's eclipse season. We have another eclipse on April 8th. This is going to be the big one. This is like a total solar eclipse. And I happen to be right in the path of totality. Not just this little picture above my head, but actually I will hopefully be able to see it, cloud permitting. Um, so that's going to be a really big one. <laughs> that's going to be a really, really big one. But eclipse season basically endures through the entirety of Aries season. So there's something really intense, catalytic about this period. Eclipses bring a quickening of change. It can be disruptive. There's a lot of shifting of tiles. There's a movement of pieces and parts going on when we think about the chessboard or the tapestry of life. There's gonna be lots of changes. There's gonna be sudden departures, sudden elevations, because um, when, when some people get taken out, it get, it gives room for other people to move up. So yeah, we're going to see a lot of disruption. This is when we typically see world events move a lot faster. And there's, go there's going to be some curveballs. Like there's going to be some things that we did not see coming. There's going to be some things that were completely unexpected and kind of throw everyone into a loop. So some of the things on the table for eclipse season going in. Where is this missing princess? What is going on with Kate Middleton? There's a lot of mixed testimony of what is going on. There's been a lot of weirdness with edited photos. The public is starting to catch on. What is going on? We have been discussing this in my monthly meetup group, Cauldron. We do have a Royals expert in the group. Shout out to Samantha Floyd Barahona. Um, Samantha has been... Um, filling in a lot of the missing pieces for the rest of us who are able to look at Kate's chart and say, oh my goodness, there are eclipses hitting the ruler of her seventh house of relationships. So something is going on. So hopefully we'll be able to find out what that is. Actually, on the day of the Aries ingress, on the day that the sun enters Aries, we see an alignment between Mercury, the planet of communication, news reports, aligning with the north node of destiny. So what that means is that we could probably be hearing some very important news dropping. Maybe it has to do um, with the princess. Maybe it has to do with what's going on with TikTok because Mercury rules social media. Um, important to note that Eris, the goddess of discord, also has a lot of significance with social media. Her discovery was in 2005. That's around the time that we started to see social media emerge in the first place. And she's the goddess of discord. Lots of keyboard warriors out there. And I mean, one thing that social media has done is it's created a place where everyone has a seat at the table. And that's something that Eris really cared deeply about. She created 
the Trojan War because she was excluded. She wasn't invited to this big party. And so, yeah, there's there's a lot of themes with Eris around representation, which social media has created space for. Um, but social media has also created a lot of chaos, like in our nervous systems, the absorption of so much information and just the fact that everyone has a voice. That's also that's also like newer for us. It's a lot to adapt to and how to um, figure out our own boundaries with the tool. So long story short, the last eclipse that we saw on October 14th, that one actually was conjunct or I'm sorry, rather a opposed Eris. So we saw like a lot of chaos erupt um, around that time. We, actually, a war did break out. Um, there was the Hamas attack on Israel and then the extreme, in my opinion, very excessive force of retaliation back. Um, now we have extreme suffering, extreme crisis going on for the Palestinian people. Um, so this eclipse actually triggers that, that last eclipse. So that's why I think we're seeing a continuation of social media themes with, with the TikTok stuff. And my guess is we're going to see some sort of key turning point, some sort of key development in the Israel-Palestine um, conflict that's going on right now. So that alignment of Mercury on the North Node we may hear something, we may hear something really important, some important call, some important research, some sort of important news drop of some kind. Maybe we hear something about the princess around that time. So keep an eye out for that alignment of Mercury on the North Node right around the time Aries season begins. So yeah, those are some of the big takeaways of Aries season. It's going to be climatic, it's going to be eventful, um, it's going to be energized. There's going to be a great deal of shifting and movement and excitement and unpredictability. Um, hopefully those eclipses serve you in the highest. Take a look at your Aries and Libra houses to see where a lot of this development is taking place and has been taking place since last spring. Um, and if you want some more help taking a look at that, I am available for sessions. So you can find that and book with me on my website. Let's go ahead and shift gears here. We're going to take a look at the Aries ingress chart. All right. So this is the Aries ingress chart. Astrologers cast this chart for the moment that the sun enters the sign of Aries. And then you want to cast that chart for the capital of the nation in question. Um, we're just gonna do a little sampling of this. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. If you're curious to gain a deeper understanding of Aries or otherwise ingress charts and how to interpret them, I'm gonna direct you to the Cauldron Library and you can gain access to that by becoming a member of my monthly chart meetup group Cauldron. And you can do that on my website. Just go to the events page and you'll find all the links. And that offering is also available for monthly drop-in, by the way. You don't need to become a member, but if you want access to the Aries Ingress lesson, then you'll have to join. So let's take a little look. I'm located in the United States, so that is the nation that I'm going to primarily focus on. I have looked at other nations, um, but... Yeah, we're going to we're going to keep it simple right now. I'm just going to look at this one. Um, OK, so we have a Scorpio rising. The last time that we had a Scorpio rising was 2020. Ooh, yeah, lots of lots of discussions around what's hidden, what's what's going on behind the scenes. Um, a lot of questions around what's true and what's not true. Um, also, just this deeper morally charged concern with the way our society is structured. Um, the Scorpio sign in by nature wants to look what's underneath, wants to dissect and uproot and call out where the, the deep seated issues are. Um, and we saw that with the George Floyd protests. We saw that um, like there was just a, an extreme 
period of critique of government and its handling. And I think that was a major turning point for a lot of people. There's been several since Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008, where the public at large has kind of said, you know, this isn't working. This is really problematic. So I think we're in for a season of, of that again. Scorpio, many also point out that it has associations with death and loss of life. And that's something that we've been really concerned about um, even this year as we think about where the United States' priorities are. Um, in terms of workers, that's going to be another really big theme for this year. Um, workers, this is going to be a really significant theme. Here we have Mercury conjunct the North Node. I mentioned that in the first part of this video as being a significant news report of some kind, some sort of um, expose or something really important. But this shows up in the Aries ingress chart, which this is going to this chart is going to take us through the entire year. Um, so we're going to be working with these themes un until spring of next year. Mercury conjunct the North Node in the sixth house of public service of work, the workers of the world, well, of the United States specifically, um, there's going to be probably some more movements to unionize. We did start out the year, or actually end the previous year too, with a lot of strikes to advocate for better pay for workers. And Mercury rules the eighth house, which is other people's money, so people saying, hey, like, give us some of that. <laughs> give us some of those um, profits from, from higher up. We, we want more of that. So I think that this, and especially with the influence of Chiron here, that would also point toward teachers, healthcare workers. I really feel like with Neptune and some of the things that we're seeing with this year, healthcare, healthcare workers, um, there's going to be like some sort of breaking point there. There's going to be some sort of pressure is on to alleviate some of these challenges. I know a lot of healthcare workers are still feeling burnt out. A lot of people are leaving in mass and this is causing a crisis. So the other thing that's really standing out in this chart is we've got Mars conjunct the IC. Mars dealing with fighting, war, conflict, disruption, dispute, severing and separations of sorts. This is going to be a distinctive theme here in this in this coming year. I know that a lot of Americans are very upset um, that their tax dollars are going toward bombing other countries versus um, having their health care paid for. So that is kind of showing up in this chart as being a concern that becomes even more emphasized. So what's important to the United States this year or what's a prevalent theme is Mars, which is division. Mars in Aquarius, though, is a sign that isn't like hot and fiery and protesty. It's kind of like innovative. It wants to try to solve a problem, but there is an extreme disruption and division going on here. Another theme that we see that's important, we have Jupiter conjunct the angle of the chart. Um, Uranus is kind of close by there too. This could be very important for certain judgments, decisions, judges in general. We also see the lot of fortune in the ninth house of, of judges and judgment. This could also highlight religion in some capacity, but there's some sort of important development there. And we see that in two places. We also see Mars on the angle, also ruling the sixth house of workers, employee, military, and how that becomes very important this year. Now, with Mars in Aquarius, there's something about it that wants to fight for equanimity or progress of some kind. So I do see this as being really stand out for workers kind of binding together and demanding better pay, better benefits, and things like that. You'll note that the moon is opposite Pluto in this chart. Now, the moon represents the people. 
So there's an extreme discontent that's going on here. Um, the moon separating from Pluto, that's indicating some sort of like feeling of behoovement, of being taken advantage of, being grossly manipulated. Like there's just extreme like sorrow and discontent here that, that the broader public feels like a sense of not even hopelessness, but like rage, like Pluto is just like the stuff that come that rumbles from the depths, the shadows, the underbelly of society. Like there's a lot of upset there about like what's hidden a lot of, um, a lot of emotion that's been like kind of kept under wraps is like coming out. So there's extreme discontent that the people are experiencing. And that is going to be in every Aries ingress for every nation. So the people are feeling very angry right now. The people are feeling very taken advantage of um, because Pluto has to do with power. And so people don't feel like the power is, is in their hands. How do we do something about that? How do we take our power back. Now the sun represents the leader right now. So the leader would be Biden. The sun is in the sixth house of workers. So on one hand, we could look at this as Biden kind of leaning to embrace the middle class. He's spoken about it as much having been middle class himself. Um, another way that we could interpret that is um, ailment or sickness. Now, I can't say that with certainty based on this chart alone, but there are some concerns with his health. And I have other um, rationale for saying so. I wouldn't say this otherwise um, through his natal chart. And I'll be releasing an article on my website that goes more into detail about why I might suggest that later. So keep an eye out for that. You can join my mailing list to stay up to date. The other thing that this says is that, you know, public support for the president is waning. So it may say that through the Aries ingress. Yet, even though people feel like he isn't quite as strong right now, the moon in the 10th house still feels like we want to support you. So the people, regardless of this falling or disappointment, the people are still like, okay, we're still behind you though. So you may be questioning, <laughs> what about the other candidate since we are in an election year? So I'm talking about Donald Trump. We just found out that it's official, the rematch is happening. So Trump is represented by the fourth house. Not a surprise that we find Mars there, not a surprise that we find Pluto there. He's actually gonna be in an Aquarius ruled year this year. Again, more details in that article that's coming out Trump is going to be represented by Saturn. Um, so Saturn in Pisces. Not necessarily the worst placement here. We've got Saturn, which is supported by Venus in very good condition. I'm choosing to interpret Venus as the trad wife. That is like the new archetype that a lot of people are discussing. So like the, the trad wife, that imagery coming into support um, the Republican Party right here. And Saturn is well situated. I think better situated than the sun. So that gives Trump actually an upper hand here. That gives the Republican Party an upper hand. But the people still kind of are leaning this way, sort of still leaning toward Democrat, um, the broader public anyways. But there is this massive hurt here. So I think the hurt needs to be addressed if the Democrats want to see a path to the White House. So that's a little bit about the Aries ingress. If you want more information on that, again, I would direct you to the Cauldron Library. It's a little bit about Aries season overall. Again, this chart is going to give us themes that we're going to be working with throughout the year. And perhaps I'll revisit this chart as we get deeper into the year. So we can reflect back and see, you know, which of those predictions came true, um, which of those predictions did not come true. I think that there is a significant emphasis on housing, the housing market too, as shown by this fourth house, the ruler of the chart in the fourth house. 
um, and the need to, to solve that, the need to resolve that with Mars and Aquarius for the everyday person. So thank you for tuning in with me. And that was your astrology shot of the day. And I'll catch you next time. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in with me today. For more astrology in your world, you can connect with me on all platforms at Astro Catherine. You can also head on over to my website, katherineurban.com, where you can book your next astrology reading. We'll go into depth into your natal chart, your progressions, your perfections, your solar return, your transits, and beyond. You can also join my mailing list where you can stay up to date with me on new classes as well as article drops. I look forward to connecting with you, and I'll see you next time.